Hi, I'm Heather. Welcome to class. Today we're going to work on twisting poses and we'll move towards some very deep twists. Before we begin, if you find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. We'll start with a basic twist, Bharadvajasana. Use some height under the buttock. So I've got a three-fold blanket and I'm going to take that across underneath just the left buttock. So I'm mirroring you. You'll be taking your feet off to your right side so that your weight is very predominant in the left buttock. Now the knees are hip width apart and both knees are on the floor. This right leg is in Virasana. The front of the ankle is resting on the arch of the left foot. Now here we haven't got the blanket underneath the right buttock. So can you descend the outer hip, outer right hip? Then we'll twist towards the right. Now because we're sitting on some height, it may be challenging to reach the floor. It depends on how long your arms are relative to your spine. But if it's difficult, you can put a brick underneath your hand. Turn away from the feet. And as you turn, keep that outer right hip descending. Now, come back to center and we're going to work with our arm bind. So we'll take the left hand behind the back to catch the right upper arm just above the elbow. If that's really difficult and you lose your grip when you're trying to take this right hand over the left leg, you could put a belt around your arm and hold on to the belt. But if possible, you hold the upper arm and then we're gonna sweep the right hand back of the right hand behind the thigh. Now if you can't reach and you're determined to keep your grip with the left hand on the upper arm, you could potentially reach to the inner right knee or thigh. So find a, a leverage point. Press the back of the hand against the thigh, whichever thigh it is, and you might note that the right hip wants to lift and go with you. Once you've got your twist, then see, can you descend the outer right hip? Notice your breath and then come out of the twist. Let's swap sides. So we'll take our blanket across so that it's underneath the right buttock as you sweep your feet to the left. So again, we've got knees hip width, the front ankle. So this left leg is in an expression of virasana. The front ankle is on the arch of the right foot. Once more, try to roll this back hip. I'm calling it the back hip because we're going to turn away from it. It's at the back of the pose. Press the head of the left thigh down. Turn to the left. So we're doing without the arm bind first to explore our spinal rotation. Don't take the left hip with you. Descend the head of the left thigh, outer left hip. Restrain the shoulder tips back and down. Then come back to center, we come out of the twist. And now for the arm bind, can you take the right hand behind the back and hold the upper arm just above the elbow crease? And again, if not, use your belt. But then I find a sharp swinging action helps to get the hand snapped behind the thigh, whether you go to the inner left thigh or you intend to go to the outer right thigh. Use that as a leverage point to help you turn. And initially you might find that back hip goes with you, but then can you descend the head of the left thigh, outer left hip, turn the body. and then come out of the pose, undo the arm bind. Now let's come off our blanket and we're going to do Bharadvajasana number two, which involves a Padmasana leg, lotus pose with one leg. Now clearly if knees are problematic or even hips uh, are problematic, then you can just repeat that um, Bharadvajasana number one that we did. So to get the leg into lotus, let's not sit on a blanket. We put that to the side. Bring the legs forward 
and we'll bring the right leg, remember I'm mirroring you, the right leg will come into Padmasana. So I find it's helpful to bring the knee into flexion first, then the external rotation of the thigh bone in the hip socket to bring the heel up high to the opposite pelvic bone. Now this leg is going to come back into Virasana. So we might want to put a blanket underneath the buttocks as we do that. So we're leaning over onto the right buttock, sweep the left leg back into Virasana and if you feel really lopsided, you can't get that thigh down, we can sit the right buttock up on a blanket. Now this Lotus knee does not have to touch the floor. We don't want to strain the knee. So let it just be sitting in the air. If you need extra support, put a brick there underneath the outer knee. Now we take the right hand behind the back to hold on to that uh, right big toe. Now, if you can't reach, put a belt around the metatarsals and hold on to the belt. So the idea is to encourage mobility in this shoulder and opening through the chest. Turn towards your lotus leg. So you can press the back of the hand, the back of the wrist behind the leg and as you turn the weight of the ankle, the foot can help descend the head of the thigh. So use the back of the hand, use that pressure as leverage to help you turn and go on descending the head of the left thigh, outer left hip. Then come back to center and we'll take the blanket out from underneath the buttock, lean onto the right buttock, sweep the left leg out of Virasana, right leg out of Padmasana. Place the blanket across to the uh, left side, close to the outer left hip and we'll bring the left leg into Padmasana. Remember, I'm mirroring you. Bend the knee up so we get the knee in flexion before we get the hip in external rotation. The heel comes close to the pelvic bone and the ankle comes high up on the root of the thigh. Don't try and force the lotus knee down to the floor. We need to be really mindful of our knees when we're practicing Padmasana. The movement should come in the hip, not so much the knee. So I'm going to lean over onto the left buttock, then bring the right leg back into Virasana and I'll put the blanket underneath the left buttock. So give the left buttock some support. So maybe the hips are the same level, that's what we're looking for. Head of the right thigh descends. Then I'm going to take the left arm behind me, catch hold of the big toe, the front of the foot, and if that's not possible, I'll put a belt around the metatarsals, the bones here, and hold on to the belt. But if you can, you catch the big toe, and then back of the right hand can come behind the outer thigh, the outer left thigh. Turn to your left and both shoulder tips press back and down. And you're using the pressure and the weight of this left foot on the head of the right thigh to remind that thigh to descend. Then come out of the twist, undo your arm bind and we'll move the blanket from underneath this hip, lean on to the left hip sweep the right leg out of Virasana and then left leg out of Padmasana. Let's move on to Muruttyasana number three and we will use our threefold blanket to sit on. It's good to have significant height to sit the buttocks on when we're in Muruttyasana because we want to make sure we're lifting the lumbar spine. If we're sitting on the floor, commonly when we bend the knee, it causes the pelvis to tilt backwards in that posterior tilt. And then the, the lumbar spine has a difficult time in lifting up. So with the height underneath the hips, we can maintain that lift. Let's bend up the right knee, catch the shin bone, sit tall. So there's some closure between the thigh and the front body. We're going to take this in a 
three different stages. Hold the shin with the left hand, simple twist to the right, right fingertips to the floor, or you can put a brick underneath that hand. Draw the lumbar spine in and up. And be mindful of the extended leg. Is that relaxed? Is it flopping out to the side? Can you roll the inner left thigh down and stay on the center left heel? Then let's come back to center. And we're gonna go a little further and we'll be hooking the elbow behind the leg. So as you turn, just as we did before, turn to the right, hook the left elbow, the upper arm bone against the thigh and turn. Use that as a lever. Put pressure, arm against leg to rotate the torso. Remember the lumbar spine is lifted so that the chest can maintain its lift. Keep awareness in the left leg, inner left thigh rolls down. Then come out of the twist. And finally, we're going to go for the arm bind. So we've got the shin in close. If the knee's problematic, you may not be able to have the knee so flexed, in which case the arm bind will be difficult to bring the uh, arm behind the shin or in front of the shin. Uh, but if you can have a deep knee flexion, then we'll go for that. Turn to the right. Hook the elbow behind the leg. And then we want to close the gap. So I like to press the right thigh across to the left side a little more. I use my right hand, put pressure on the thigh, close the gap. Can I bring the back of the top part of my upper arm and shoulder right up against the thigh? So I'm closing the gap between my body and the leg. And I want to resist the leg back against the arm so I'm not crossing the groins. Resist the right leg back against the arm. But then I internally rotate the left arm and I sweep the left arm back behind me towards the waist, the left waist. And I swing the right arm behind, catch the right wrist if I can. Maybe you go for a monkey grip or maybe you use a belt. Now, there may be a crossing of groins that happens in an effort to catch. That's okay. Once you've got your catch, your grip, descend the outer right hip, uncross the groins. So you're resisting the right leg back against the left arm. And start by looking towards your left foot. Keep attention in the left leg, in the left thigh roll down. Then turn to look over the right shoulder. Move the outer right hip forward towards the left foot. Then release your bind and come out of the twist. Stretch the right leg forward. Left leg. Bend up the left leg. Stand on the left foot and just watch this right leg's not uh, flopping out to the side. So we keep attention in this leg. Roll the inner right thigh down. Stay in the center right heel. Simple twist. Hold the shin, left shin with your right hand. Turn to the left. So as you turn, maybe this left hip wants to go with you. Can you restrain the outer left hip forward towards the front end of your mat? Then come out of the twist and we'll go to the next step. So as we turn, we're going to place the elbow behind the outer leg. So I've got the lower part of the upper arm pressing against the thigh bone as I twist. Put pressure. So the arm presses against the leg, but the leg resists against the arm. So the pressure of the arm is not causing the groins to cross. The leg resists back. Turn to look over the left shoulder. Inner right thigh rolls down. Inner right foot presses forward, away from the groin. Then come out of the twist. And we'll go even deeper still if possible. So as we turn and we want to get this arm behind the leg again, I often like to use the pressure. I push with my left hand across the groins. I allow that crossing of the groin so I can get as close to the leg as I can. I want to try and close the gap between my um, right armpit chest, back of the right shoulder and uh, left leg. Then before I uncross the groins, before I resist this leg against the arm, I'm going to internally rotate my arm. So I can wrap the arm back behind. The right hand comes back towards the right side waist. 
I'm going to wrap the left arm behind, go for a monkey grip or catch the wrist, catch the left wrist with the right hand, and then I will resist my left leg back against the arm. Look towards the right foot. Keep pressing the ball of the right big toe away from the groin as the inner right thigh rolls down. And then as I look over the left shoulder, I roll the outer left hip forward towards the front end of my mat, which is where the right foot is. Okay, then release your grip, release your bind, and stretch the left leg forward. Now, we'll come off the blanket for the next pose, but keep it behind you in case you want to bring it back in underneath the buttocks as we do uh, Ardha Matsyandrasana number two. The left leg will come into Padmasana, lotus pose. So bend the knee, externally rotate the thigh. Now remember, if Padmasana is not for you, you do an alternative. You can potentially just sit with the uh, leg in a Janusrasana expression and, and um, do variations like that. But if possible, left leg in Padmasana, heel coming up close to the pelvic bone and whether the knee touches the floor or not is of no consequence. It's more about the external rotation in the, with the thigh bone in the pelvis that we're looking for. Watch the right leg doesn't roll out. So the inner right thigh is rolling down. We're staying on the center right heel. In this pose, we're going to be twisting and leaning forward enough that we can reach the left hand to the outer right foot. So if that's difficult, you could put a belt around the foot to hold on to the belt and you can use your blanket underneath the buttocks. We're twisting to the right and we want to wrap the right arm behind. Maybe just touching the waist is enough. Maybe the hand can come to the inner left thigh. And you'll note I'm pressing my left hand against my right shin to help turn my body. And maybe the hand can go all the way over the shin bone. Now, if this is problematic, you could put a belt around your shin and thigh and hold on to the belt. And then can you reach your left hand to the outer left foot, lift the sternum. But remember the lift stems from the lift in the lumbar spine. So you've got to be able to roll the pelvis forward and twist to the right. Roll the outer left shoulder down. Then release from the pose, come out of the twist, undo your lotus leg. Now let's bend up this right leg into Padmasana. So bend the knee, externally rotate the thigh, bring your heel up close to the left pelvic bone. And watch this left leg just doesn't roll out. Internally rotate the thighs so that the inner thigh rolls down and the inner foot can lengthen forward away from the groin. Then we'll twist to the right and see can you wrap the left arm behind. Perhaps you can reach your thigh. If not, put a belt around the shin, around the thigh so you can hold onto the belt. And maybe you can go a little further, take your hand forward towards the shin. And then the right hand catches the outer left foot. You lift the sternum, but roll the outer right shoulder down and turn to look over the left shoulder. Notice your breath. And as you notice the breath, steady the breath. And then come out of the twist and straighten the right leg. One of the things that we find when we're doing strong twisting poses is that the diaphragm area is um, somewhat compromised when we're twisting. And often, you know, if we're doing closed twists, then um, the breath can be quite shallow, short and shallow. And that's okay as long as we notice it and we keep breathing. We're going to move to Ardha Matsyandrasana number one. And I'm going to keep the blanket here to demonstrate how we could use it if we need it. And I'm going to turn so that my back is facing this particular angle so you can see the positioning of the feet. So I'm wanting to sit on only the left foot. I'm going to step the right foot forward. So this is in a Marichyasana expression. And then 
I kink the left ankle in such a way that my left sitting bone can be on the left heel and my right sitting bone can be on the ball of the foot. Now, if there is a problem in the knee or in the ankle and the foot and it's really challenging, you could put a blanket between the heel and the buttock. Potentially, you could wedge a brick in here under the right buttock. If you find it difficult to create the platform that we're after for both buttocks. So then if possible, you step right foot over the left thigh as if you're standing on that right foot. Bring the toes back in line with the left knee. Sit straight like we did for Marichasana number three. Let's turn to the right. The first stage just holding the shin with the left hand. Keep the outer right hip rolling down. Now we're going to the next stage. Hook the left elbow behind the leg and put pressure on the leg so that helps you rotate the left armpit chest further around towards the right. And then further still, can we close this gap between the body and the leg? So it could be helpful to press on the left thigh with your right hand, lean into the leg, bring the back of the upper arm right up against the top of the thigh there. So I, I am leaning across the left side a little bit to get there, but then I want to descend the right hip again. Then can you reach your left hand to catch the inner left foot? Now sometimes this elbow may hyperextend, so roll the inner elbow back towards the shin. And then we'll sweep the right arm back so it sits on the top of the pelvis on the waist and it reaches towards the upper left thigh. Turn to the right. Lift the sternum as much as you can. And then come out of the bind and we'll take that right leg back into Vajrasana, Thunderbolt Pose. So we'll just kneel for a moment. Heels under the sitting bones. And then we'll swap sides. So step your left foot forward, standing on the left foot. Kink the right ankle in such a way that the right buttock sits on the right heel, left buttock sits on the ball of the foot. And then we'll step left foot over the right knee. Try and bring the foot back so the toes come further back towards the line of that left knee. First stage, hold the shin with the right hand, turn, lift up the lumbar spine. Notice how the outer left hip might want to draw back towards the back end of the mat. Can you move the outer left hip forward towards the front end of the mat? Second stage, hook your elbow behind the leg and put pressure, the arm bone pressing against the thigh bone to help you turn this right armpit chest further around towards the left side. Third stage, it can be helpful to use your left hand, press against the left leg so the left leg goes further across to the right side as you bring the arm, the back of the right upper arm against the left leg, try and close the gap between the body and the thigh. And then perhaps you can reach your right hand to catch the inner left foot. Press down the inner left foot and watch the inner elbow doesn't flare forward and there's hyperextension there. The inner elbow can roll back towards your shin. Twist to the left and can you sweep that left arm back so it comes to sit on the waist and the hand reaches towards your upper thigh. Turn deeply to the left. Keep lifting the chest. Notice your breath. And then we'll come out of the twist and bring the left leg back into Vajrasana, sit on the heels. We're going to do one more deep twisting pose. It's called Pashyasana, which means the noose pose. And we'll use the wall 
to help get us started. We're also going to use a blanket for the heels. So we'll be in a deep squat. I'm going to leave my mat behind and I'll be using my blanket for my heels so that I can squat down and still dig the heels down. Now I want to use the wall for the hand. So as I twist to the right side, I'm going to hook the left elbow behind the right knee and place the hands on a diagonal line on the wall and get the feeling of pushing the upper arm against the leg to turn, but resist the legs back to the arm. So don't just let the legs move off to the left. Resist the legs back so they stay in the same plane as the feet and the hips. And as you push into the wall with the right hand, turn the chest. Right chest up. And then to go deeper, again, we want to close the gap between the thigh and the torso. So can you take your upper arm, back of the upper arm, more behind the outer leg? The knees can go off to the left while you do this. And we're going to internally rotate that left arm, bring the arm back. And maybe it's enough for you to reach back to the ankle. But here, this is where we want to swing the right arm back and catch a hold, and uh, using a belt can be helpful. Right hand back, maybe a monkey grip with the fingers, or maybe you wrap a strap there. Then we want to resist the legs back towards the wall, turn to the right, descend the buttocks and lengthen the sternum forward. And then undo the grip, come out of the twist, and we'll swap sides. So again, we're going to squat. Knees and feet are together. Thighs are together. Twist, right elbow behind the left leg. Take your hands on the wall on a diagonal line. And as you press against the wall, use that to turn your left chest up away from the floor. So the buttocks are descending as the heels are pressing down and the torso is lengthening, leaning over the legs. Then to go deeper, you can use your left hand to press against the left thigh, take the legs, you can let them lean off to the right side and then try and close the gap between the body and the legs. Bring the back of the right upper arm against the legs. Internally rotate your arm, wrap your hand back and maybe it's enough for you to reach for the uh, ankle there. Or you then take your left arm back and go for a monkey grip or swing a strap behind you, swing a belt behind you to hold on. But you turn and you resist the legs back towards the wall. You go on descending the hips, observing your breath. Then release the bind and come out of the pose. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. For more in-depth teaching, check out the video library on my website, heatherkitchenyoga.com.au. The link is in the description box below.